So today we're just going to be working on a pretty simple project and that is adding YouTube videos to your website. So you can notice how on my website there isn't just a link to my channel, I actually have a gallery of all the YouTube videos just like directly under it and you can just scroll through them and you can just click on one to go to that video that you want to watch. This makes it much easier for people that just want to look at your videos a bit without having to bother clicking on the channel. So the way that we do this is actually pretty simple, is this with something called the YouTube API. Basically, you can just ask YouTube a question like, hey YouTube, can you get all the videos from my channel? And it gives you a JavaScript object, and you can just use a bit of code to add that into your HTML. But let's just get started. So let's just open a new page and just search YouTube API like that. And it should give you as a first result the correct thing, which is YouTube Data API. So let's just click on that. And you can see the URL is developers.google.com slash YouTube slash V3. And you can see that it brings you to this website and we can just click get started. So for most things, I would say that the YouTube API, like it gives you a pretty good tutorial at the beginning of how to set everything up. But after that, it gets a bit confusing, like you're not sure where to find the stuff that you want to use. So you can see that at the top, there's home, guides, reference, sample, support. For me, I would say the most helpful part is the reference and it actually tells you how to get videos from like a playlist, how to get stuff from there and blah, blah, blah. But before we do that, let's just actually get started and set everything up. So we need to go to the Google API console. So we can just click this link, create a project in the developer console. So it opens you a new tab. And this tab is console.google.com slash APIs, blah, blah, blah. And here you can see that for mine, I already have a website set up, but for you, it might just say like create a project or something. So click on the top right corner and I have a few, but just click new project, just like that. And I'm just going to call it YouTube demo, but of course, call it whatever you want. Location, no organization, create. Great. So now, of course, we created it, but for some reason, it still shows this website as that. So make sure, go to the selector and make sure it's showing the correct project. And now you can click YouTube demo and it should switch to the correct one. So here's a dashboard that has like basically nothing and shows you the API secret use, blah, 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 like that. And when you click on the menu, you can see that it gives you a bunch of stuff like building, API, whatever, support, admin. But we don't need all of that. We just need to make sure that you go to the APNs and services tab, which should be here by default, and click enable APIs and services. And then it should give you a search bar for you to search the APIs. And you might notice that it actually has a bunch of other APIs. So like maps, calendar, translate. We're not going to be doing that today. We're just going to be using the YouTube API. But once you know how to set it up for the YouTube API, it should work pretty well for everything else. So let's just search YouTube Data API v3, like that. And here you can see that it shows you one result. Just click on it and click Enable. So once you're done with that, it should bring you to this page. And you can see that at the top, there's a notification that says to use this API, you may need credentials. So let's just click the Create Credentials button. And here you can see you can just select the API you're using, which would be the YouTube Data API v3. And the second question is what type of data would we be accessing? And for us, that would be public data, so like videos. User data is like private user information, and that would require you to log in to the user's account. We don't need that for now. So let's just click Next. Here it is your credentials and your API key. So let's just copy that, but don't worry, you'll still be able to access it later. And after we're done with that, we can just click Done. So let me just quickly explain how an API key works. Basically, whenever you make a request and ask YouTube something, you have to send the key with it. This makes it so that only the people with the key can actually you know, access the API, because you obviously don't want random people to just be making requests all the time. The problem with that is, when you're using it on your website, anyone can just open your web inspector and inspect all the code inside. So of course, people can just like find your API key and copy and paste it, and basically steal it. What we can do to help with that is basically, what we can do to help with that is add a bunch of limits and restrictions. But for now, we're not going to do that. It makes testing and developing a lot easier. But remember, when you're finished, to always secure it. We'll be going over that at the end of the video. But other than that, we're basically done with the setting up part and we can actually get to the programming. So let's just go back to the website that has YouTube Data API and click Reference. And now you can see that it gives you a bunch of stuff that 
you can have you know playlists channels and it's not actually in the channels part because channels only gives you stuff like the name of the channel the profile picture blah 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 like data about the channels if you want the videos you actually have to go to search so you have to search for the videos and filter it out so that it's but only from one channel so search list here it gives you all the stuff that you can make a list of and also you can see that on the side there's a very helpful basically like interactive API getter thing so now we can just fill this out and you can see the one required parameter is part and we can just type snippet snippet basically gives you like data about the videos like you know the URL the titles the description the thumbnail and everything you want and now you can see that you can filter by channel ID which is what we're actually going to do and my channel ID is basically this part at the end of the URL so uh, let's go back to that paste it in and basically that's it all we need is also max results we're going to say like 10 for now and also the order will be by date you can also sort by like view count and relevance if you want that but we're going to use date as the newest videos first great there's a bunch of other stuff but we're just going to leave that empty and scroll to the bottom we do not need Google OAuth 2, which is like the sign in stuff because we don't need to sign into the channel. This is all just public data. All we need is the API key. So let's just click execute. And you can see that it gives you a green thing that says 200, which means basically success. And it shows you this like object that has a lot of other stuff. So let's just look at it. In this here, we have an array that's called items. And here we have a kind search result. Basically, and the ID as a YouTube video, and you can see like published ad, title, description, thumbnails. And for the thumbnails, it's basically a URL that you can just put onto an image tag, and it will just like display the image. So let's say we go here and copy that. You can see that when we paste it in, it shows you my thumbnail image here. Kind of, it's kind of small, but you can change the resolution if you want. So how do you actually make this request in JavaScript? So we can click show code and here we can say like HTTP and there's also JavaScript. JavaScript, it makes it look a lot like a lot more weird. We're just going to use the HTTPS method. Basically, it's a get request uh, at this URL. If it allows me to scroll, we basically copy and paste this entire URL here and paste it into the search bar. And that's basically it. All we need is that you can see here it says key and then like your API key, that's thing we need to fill in. So we're just gonna go back to the Cloud Console and copy this API key here. And then we can just go back, delete the your API key part, and like paste in our actual API key. And now we can just press enter and basically go to that website. And you can see that it basically returns you the JSON file like it showed us before. And these are basically my last 10 videos. So now we're done with the API part, all we need is to build the actual website now. Now we can basically just go to a file manager and like create a new folder wherever you want. I'm going to make it, call it something like YouTube API. I don't know, call it whatever you want. And now we can just open it in a text editor like Atom or Sublime Text, VS Code, whatever you want. And open that folder. For me, that would be here. Open it up. Then just create a new file. Save it as index.html. Great. We're, of course, we're just going to do the usual website stuff. Name it like YouTube. Hello world. Okay, and now what you do is, of course, just like open the website in the browser, which you can do by just clicking on the HTML file or also starting a local host server. But it doesn't really matter for now. I'm going to delete this thing, do it h1 my YouTube videos like that great we're also going to create a new file save it script.js for JavaScript and include it in the HTML and so see equals script.js of course what we can do is go here console.log hello just to make sure it's working open the inspector and you can see we see hello. So basically, it works. And now we can get started with the code. Okay, so let's just switch back to the previous thing with the API request, copy and paste that link, 
and put it in the JavaScript file. What we're going to do to get the contents of this URL is basically using something called fetch and using a string and just paste the URL in there. So fetch, what it does, this function returns a promise. And there are a lot of tutorials that tell you about and explain what it promises. But basically, basically what you can do is called dot then and dot then inside you pass it in a function and that function will be called whenever the operation is complete and it will pass in the data to that function so what we can do is create an arrow function like this and here what we can do is uh, basically have data and let's just console.log the data for now open inspector and of course I put it in quotes so that's not gonna work correctly and you can see that now it gives you this response. So to actually get the data that we see here, what we have to do is instead of just data, we have to call uh, data.json, like that, call the JSON function. And let's just console.log that again. And you can see what it gives you, basically an object that contains all of our videos. And you can see the snippet, the thumbnails, and everything like that. So basically, that's good. What you can do is instead of console.login it, you can actually return it from the function then. And you can actually chain another dot then to it. So this dot then we're going to name data. And this is actually the object. And just for just to make it less confusing, we're gonna make name this like result instead of data. And also change that to result. So for here, let's just actually console.log the data again just to inspect it and see which ones we need to use. So you can see that here in this object, there's a thing called items which actually contains the stuff we want. So for items, basically you can see that it gives you the videos. So what we can say is something like let videos equals data dot items. So declare a new variable. And for each of these, you can see that it is an object that contains stuff like the actual snippet. So we can use the for loop for video of videos. So basically it loops through all of the videos. And basically you can say console.log uh, each of these objects. We can say video.snippet, which is where actually the data is, and then dot title. Great. So you can see that now it actually logs all of the titles that we have. An easy way that we can test if this works is we can use something called like document dot write dot write, and now you can see that it actually gives you and puts all of those YouTube videos on the website. Basically, we're done now. All we need is to like make the website you know look a bit prettier and make it actually you know work good. So let's say what we can do, maybe like div. Make, give it a class name of YouTube container. And here we can just like add, you know, videos to it. So let's say like let video container equals document dot query selector dot videos container. Do I name a videos container or a YouTube container? Great. So now we have that. What we can do is like video container dot in the HTML, and then we can use plus equal to plus equal what? We can make basically a string. Here we can have like a tag that's like uh, image src equals src would be equal to. video dot snippet dot thumbnails thumbnails dot default dot url like that and of course here we need like a close tag oh and of course we're going to make a dash like that so it actually gives you the correct element and now you can see that it actually works and you can see we have all 10 videos right here if you want the images to be bigger instead of default we can say like hi and that gives you much bigger and higher resolution images. And now basically we're done with the code. All we need is to add a bit of CSS and that's basically it. But there's one more thing and that is that now you can see we only have uh, 10. 
not all of the videos. That's because for here, we give you the max results to be 10. But actually what happens is that you can't have like an infinite max results. You can't give it like 1000. The maximum is like 50 or something. So how do you get the thing from like the next one? Well, actually what you do is with something called the next page token. When we have the data, here we have something else called the console. We have console.log data dot next page token like this. So now when you uh, inspect it, you can see the next page token is like this ID. And basically what we do is we have to pass in the next page token with a request. So basically we can get the second page. To do that, let's just declare a variable, something like next page token equals nothing for now. And here we can just say uh, next page token equals to data the next page token. So basically now we just pass in the token as part of the request. So how about we go to the end here and just add and page token equals to and then we can just add that to here. Another thing that we can do is put this as part of a function so we can call it a bunch of times. So function get videos like that and also format it a bit more nicely. Okay. So of course now it doesn't run because nobody called the function. So let's just call it get videos like that. And after a bit you can see that it loads the top pin. And let's just do it again. And you can see that it loads the next 10. If we do that again, you can see that it loads the 10 after that. So basically this is how page tokens work is basically just a thing to avoid you from lo loading too many tokens when you don't want to. You can make this automatic when you detect your users scrolling to the end of the page and you can do stuff like that. But, but yeah, now we're basically done with the video. That's basically it. You know, you can make the elements much more complicated. Here I just added a video tag. If you wrap that in a div and maybe like add a header under that, you can, you know, make it a bit more interesting. For example, let's just say, how about that, h3 it's three and in the middle we can add something like video dot snippet dot title and of course we're gonna to have to call get videos but you can see that now we have the title actually here so you can see how you can just like manipulate the API and do whatever you want this is just like normal JavaScript and you can add stuff the final thing that I'm gonna show you is how to secure your API key right so we can go here click the API key and it will go to here. So what we can do is click application restrictions, HTTP refers, so we can only allow websites and we're going to add it from, let's say we only allow, for example, my website tonyjohn.net to use it. And also we can restrict the API that the key can call. So we can restrict it so it can only be used on the YouTube data API. So before when we didn't do this, you can technically call any API with that key. So now we will say save. Great. So now you can see if we try and reload here type get videos it actually gives you an error. It doesn't work right. You're not allowed for access because now I am not on my website. I'm using localhost. So you can see that with a pretty simple method. You can make it so that basically it doesn't work when people try to use it anywhere except your website. All right, I'm just going to wrap up this video here. If you learned something about how to use the YouTube data API, then please give this video a like and subscribe for more videos like this. I'm Tony and I'll see you next time.